Picking it with Kay and Clay. 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 Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and watching or listening to Kicking It With Kay and Clay. I'm your girl, Kay Marie. And I just want to start off by saying, um, well, by the time you guys see this episode, um, it'll be a few days that went past. And I just want to send out, we just want to send out our condolences to um, Chadwick Bozeman's family, his wife, um, his friends and his fans. Um, we lost a great person, you know, in the black community. He was a great actor. Um, his role as uh, the Black Panther, it wasn't just a role. You know, people felt proud. You know how we did when we saw that movie, you know, we all, we got dressed up. I was one of the ones, you know, got dressed up. It was something that we can look up to, you know, um, a black superhero. And, um, you know, he will be greatly missed. So today um, we want to talk about Christians and yoga. You know, what's the what's the big thing? Um, some Christians in the Christian community, um, regardless of um, which uh, sect you represent, um, feel that yoga, doing yoga, participating in yoga, exercises is some people think it's demonic. Some people think that, you know, we shouldn't be doing it. Some people think it's betraying their faith. And that is simply not the case. Um, I love yoga myself and I've been doing yoga for, you know, a few years, you know, just going to the classes. And today we have someone who will give us some information about yoga and Christianity as she is a Christian yoga teacher that exists. <laughs> okay. So without further ado, we are going to introduce our next guest. Our guest today is the owner of Sacred Space Yoga Center, a minister at Frontline Christian Church, an adjunct professor at Wayne State University, and master yoga instructor and reflexology therapist. By accident, she stumbled across Christian yoga one Saturday morning when she decided to add worship music to her normal yoga practice. From this one simple change, her practice and direction changed. Since that Saturday morning, over 15 years ago, she practices and teaches yoga strictly from a Christian and inspirational space. After losing her job of 22 years, she decided to make lemonade from the lemons and she opens sacred space yoga center ssyc for short in 2015 ssyc is not an ordinary yoga studio it is a place where emotional physical and spiritual healing takes place the center offers reflexology services education on the potency of essential oils for overall health and lately cooking demos with her husband. She is a highly sought after yoga instructor and teacher and speaker in the benefits and knowledge of Christians practicing yoga. I'm gonna say that again, Christians practicing yoga. Her expertise is with seniors, children, and with those looking to use yoga to offset illnesses and relieve stress. She loves what she does and she loves sharing it with others. She considered what she does a ministry and not a job. Therefore, she could not quit if she wanted to. She honestly believes this is a calling from God and her steps are ordered. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Trina Campbell. Hi, Trina. Hi, thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I know we were talking a little bit offline. I actually went to one of your classes um, in your studio. It was back in 2018. I was there with a friend. She invited me and 
I had the most wonderful experience. I, you know, that's my first time being in a Christian yoga class. And so can you just let people know, just give us a little more background. Uh, I know what in the intro it said that you kind of, you know, um, got into it by accident on one Saturday um, class where you play worship music. So what led you to do that in the first place? I was going through a divorce. <laughs> okay. And I was in a pretty low place. So I had a class and I was at the YMCA at that time. And before class, I normally kind of do my own thing to kind of get me in the mood and to set the atmosphere. Okay. So this particular day, I was, like I said, pretty low. So I turned on a CD that I had by Juanita Bynum. Mm -hmm. And she has some just some worship music that's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I turned it on. And as I began to do my sun salutation and do yoga, it just took me to a whole different experience. It was more like I was worshiping as opposed to doing yoga. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, from a personal practice, I just started using Christian music, mostly worship music, to do my personal practice. And then as things evolved, I began using Christian, um, even in my secular classes at the Y in different places, I began using Christian music, but from an instrumental standpoint. Okay. And what happened is some of the people came to me and said, oh, I love your music choice. And others came to me, we know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> they was Christian. They're like, we love it, you know? So, you know, from there, I began to explore yoga from a Christian standpoint. And I found out there was lots of um, agencies out there that register that um, actually um, work with C um, students to be a Christian yoga student. So there's a lot of teaching out there that's done by Christians and a lot of organizations that train um, yoga instructors on how to be a yoga instructor from a Christian standpoint. So how was that different from being a um, a yoga instructor from another standpoint? So what, what was the difference that you saw? There's not a whole lot of difference. The mm -hmm. difference is that we are more intentional about, you know, we don't say the universe or so that. Right. Intentional. We say Jesus, we use God. We're very intentional about who our supreme being is, who our healer is, who we worship. We're very intentional. And we tend to use music that's more um, upbeat, um, Christian, inspirational, because it's not always Christian. It could right. Be really good inspiration music out there. So our music and our intention just tends to be uh, more intentional and more in line with who we are. Because the thing is, is that even before I really started teaching from a Christian standpoint, people that knew me will always say something different about your classes. You know, that, you know mm. because I'm a Christian. I'm a minister. Yeah. So I am who I am, and it's going to always come out. Okay. So it's, you know, I was doing it anyway, just not as intentional. And then I began to change it and make it more intentional. Okay. So how did you get into yoga in the first place? That's so funny. So a long time ago, in the 90s, my daughter was a figure skater. And at that time, I noticed that her figure skating club was not as um, intentional. They, was not, they didn't have the flexibility. They didn't have the mental stability. So literally, I self-taught myself yoga. And I began marketing it to the um, figure skater clubs. Mm. And it helped pay for her skating because she was, um, she was a competitive. I was paying about $3,000 a month for her to skate. Mm -hmm. I began to um, just learn a little bit more and just began to um, teach other yoga studio, uh, other um, figure skaters going to different figure skating clubs. And that's how I got started into it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now I <laughs> so what? Okay. So when somebody comes to your class, right? What can they actually expect? I mean, I, I've been there, I know, but for those who saying you know what i'm kind of she's piqued my interest so um what let me what's what can i expect from her class well you can expect from my class when you go to my class so i i teach my sector of people is usually from 35 or 40 to 82 okay so i have a older crowd i also have your non-traditional crowd they may be heavier they may be um stiffer and all that way. So I, I call myself experience our difference. Okay. So our difference is when you come in the door, you're going to come into our area to where 
you just got you may not know it's the presence of god but it's going to be so serene okay yeah Normally there's some type of essential oils in the background whether it's frankincense or lemon just depending on what type of class it is and the music is going to be appropriate for the class so if you're coming to one of our candlelight classes i've been to that one loved it <laughs> It's going to be a class where it's definitely uh, some type of relaxing oil in the background. The music is going to be a worship music and the mood is going to be set. The lights are down and it's all lit with candles. And so you're going to go through that type of class is mostly a restorative type class, a very slow class. So it's going to be a class where you're going to get some nice movement, some stretching, very reflective, both mentally, physically and spiritual. Okay. So again, for those who are listening and um, who are Christian and who had that mindset of, you know, we shouldn't be doing this, but starting to say, well, that don't sound too bad. Take us back. What is, what is yoga actually? Yoga is, is about a yoke. It's bringing together the mind, the body, and the spirit. So what it does is, let me just explain something. So have you ever been to the grocery store and you went and you parked your car, you went in and shopped and you came out and can't remember where your car is? Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> because you were so disconnected, you know, from the mental part, from the body part. So what yoga does is try to yoke you together, bring you to a more present, where you're present most of the time. You know, there's going to be times where we are just, it is what it is, right? Right. <laughs> most of the time, we want you to be present. We want you the mental, the physical, and the spiritual. So if you, if you even your body's not feeling that well, but from a spiritual standpoint, you know you have joy because we know joy is innate. It, it, it's inside of us. Nothing yeah. has to happen. So you can bring all that together. So yoga is yoking, bringing the mental, the spiritual, and the physical together. So you can be a whole person. Okay. See, that's and and that's that's one of the things I love about it and. And the breathing aspect of it. Um, so just speaking of br the breathing, just speak of some benefits of yoga. There's so many benefits. It affects all body systems. You know, the breathing helps you. It helps a lot of my seniors. They have a shortness of breath. They may have congestive heart failure, COPD, what have you. It helps bring more breath into their body. They get a better breathing, or uh, whether you have asthma or what have you, you can learn how to breathe correctly, fully, and use the entire breath. The average person only use about 60% of their breath capacity. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the breath, look at it this way. You know how dogs age in like six, seven years at a time? The reason is dogs pant. They don't breathe. They're not getting that full breath, which means that shortens their life. And the same thing in humans, we never talk about it, but because we don't breathe fully, we're not allowing our body to heal and get the oxygen we need to need. So breathing is one of the best things about yoga. Then the meditation part of it is being able to be still. Now, meditation is one of the areas where people say, that's the problem. I don't want to go to a place where right. I'm spaced out or what have you. Right. The thing is, is that most of us have too much of a monkey mind. We're not going there anyway. Okay, so just to even be still, how you know we get in late in the evening, we get our Bibles, we want to read, we fall asleep. Yeah, we want to meditate, we fall asleep. So meditation is just getting you to a point to where you can be still. Psalm forty six and ten: Be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. So when you can get to a place where you can be still, you know, there's another scripture that says, "Study yourself to be quiet." You know, we have so much going around us. So with meditation, it's allowing us to get still so we can calm the nervous system. We can take some of that chatter out of our head. We can be a little more um, steady in what, you know, if we're going to um, meditate or we're going to study, we can have a clear head. So you have that. So that's the breathing, the meditation, and then the physical part. Most of us are so tight in our body. We're still. And no, usually if you stiff in your body, you stiff in your thinking. The two normally mm -hmm. goes together. Mm -hmm. You have somebody say, she's really tight. Normally you're tight in your body. So from a physical standpoint, we're learning to elongate the body, get longer, take some of those knots and tightness out of mm -hmm. the body, 
And we're learning to just bring health to the body through the stretching and through the poses. And, you know, even with, you know, uh, massaging your internal organs with twists and turns. So from a medical, from a physical standpoint, yoga does so many things and just helping you live a more relaxed life, if nothing else. I agree because before, you know, COVID happened, um, I will go to my yoga class on Thursdays because that was the end of my work week mm -hmm. and it will be Thursday evening. And that was like the cap for me for the, for the whole week because, you know, I can just let go, um, uh, just, you know, be at peace. I mean, I'm, I'm always at peace, but, you know, just from the, I could have had a, a bad day or whatever. And just having doing yoga, you know, in that class, you know, just stretching and everything, you know, it, it's it's helped with you know my balance because you know when we get older, you lose your balance. You know, I don't want to be a senior citizen, you know, falling and stuff like that. I, I want to keep my balance and um, you know become more flexible. And um, and like you said, it's just the, the, the meditation part of it. Like you said, it's being still. Just being still, and one of my favorite um, poses and part of the yoga is what they call like the dead man pose, you know, because you just, you know, lay in there and, you know, you're listening to the music, you just take it everything all in, you're just being still, and that is just so refreshing. But let me interject something with that pose. It's called shavasana, or it's just a meditative pose. It takes a lot to be still. So you got to continuously work at being still. Mm -hmm. But also, while you're being still, you want to begin to relax your body, muscle by muscle. I mean, just starting with the facial muscle, bringing a softer countenance about your face, begin to relax the shoulders. And to go to a relaxation part, it can take almost 10 minutes for you to totally relax your body. And if you're coming to a class right after work, you got to calm down. You got to step back. You yeah. Pause button. So it's a process, you know, and that's some of our problems because we study going, we're on a continuous, you know, rat race. We don't allow our body to be still mm. going to sleep. Some of us, we struggle, we fight to go to sleep, we, you know, and then we get up and we ride out the door. But if you can just get up and just be still consciously, be still, go into prayer, go into meditation and just allow the body to rejuvenate and take it step by step and not trying to rush into everything. That's, yeah, that's a good point. From the physical standpoint, my oldest student is 84 years old. Oh, wow. And I have several 80-year-olds, 77 year olds Now, they do chair yoga. But chair yoga, the only difference between chair yoga is that you don't have to get up and off the floor. But all of my seniors can testify. Most of them are along. If they drop something, they can pick it up. If they mm -hmm. go into the bed, they can go into the bed to get it. If something's up top on the top shelf, they can reach. You know, so my seniors is probably my best testimony. And I love my seniors because they are very loyal. Because they know what it means to be able to begin to lose some mobility or mm -hmm. to lose your balance. So my seniors can testify to the most. And, you know, my, my mom come to my class, my pastor come to my class, all types of friends. And with COVID and going Zoom, now having people just telling their friends in uh, Frisco, Texas, telling their friends in North Carolina. So they all come in on and they're learning what it means to be able to move the body. So when you get up off the couch, you're not stiff. It doesn't take five minutes. You can hop up. Right. And I think, too, um, because I, I work um, at a place where, because um, I, I don't want to say where I work, but I, um, it's a place where, um, kids come, you know, for therapy. Um, you know, we do have, you know, they can get psychiatric services as well. So, you know, I see like a lot of kids like on medication, you know, due to ADHD or, um, other, you know, attention def um, disorders. And I personally, I think, you know, if something as simple as a yoga class can like just for those who are diagnosed with ADD, you know, they, you know, their attention span is, is, is very short and they're always like hyper. I think like a yoga class would be very beneficial, you know, to, 
like you said, calm everything down and just relax and focus. You know, what, what do you yeah. think about that? I teach at quite a few Detroit elementary schools, and uh, I have one school in the Pacific, and I'm going to have to call them out, Coleman Young. They've adapted it. They have quiet time in the morning. They give everybody time to breathe. But in this particular class, you know, a lot of the kids are up and down. It takes a lot to really get them to quiet themselves. And I had this young boy that was, this is, he was just loud, always all <laughs> over the place. I could never get him to calm down. So I didn't think he got any benefits from it. So one day I noticed in my studio, a lady come in with one of the mats because we give the kids mats. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, that's one of the parents. She came in, she took the class and she came to me and said, I just want to thank you. I'm like, she told me, my son brought this home to me and he taught me all the breathing class, um, mm -hmm. aspects. And I have, um, I have lots of pain. And whenever I go into pain, he said, mom, come on, let's breathe. She said, I know all the breathing that you taught him. And it was so interesting because I didn't think this kid got anything. <laughs> right. But yeah, he did. And he took it home to his mother. And she started doing yoga, but definitely does the breathing part because she's in pain so much. And so breathing really helps her. It, you know, because when we're in pain, we tense, we tight. But if we can just breathe and just kind of let it go, and the pain will sometimes subside. It definitely won't be as harsh as it was. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, cause I remember I, you know, had, I remember one time <laughs> I had some, um, like just some chest pains and I drove myself to the hospital, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, the worst. Mm -hmm. So when I, it was like an urgent care. So when I got there, you know, they were asking me questions, well, can you do this? Can you do that? You know, I'm thinking it was negative. I was like, yes, yes. And they were like, okay, yeah, you're not having a heart. <laughs> but you know, so when I saw the doctor, you know, he just said sometimes, you know, the body and my, my, my own doctor said this too, you know, the body, it, it does stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. And he had me just take deep breaths, like breathe in and breathe out. And, you know, I did that for a couple of times and, you know, the pain subsided, it was gone. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because my stepmother, she had a um, triple bypass mm. and she had a heart attack. And I went to one of her meetings with her towards the end after she did surgery and she was doing well. So our doctor said, you know, I really want you to start taking yoga. You need to start breathing, taking yoga. And I didn't say a word because she never came to my classes. And she just smiled. And the doctor said, well, do you know a yoga person? She said, yes. <laughs> she looked at me. She said, my daughter is a master yoga teacher. He's like, and you don't go? <laughs> <laughs> and she's been ever since. And it's really helping her because um, she's very, has that A personality just driving. And it's really helping her slow her down and get her to breathe, you know. So it helps her. My daughters have started coming now, especially during COVID. She's an attorney and she's so uptight some days. It's like <laughs> <laughs> and she tell me, you know, and she never turns her camera on. And I said, why don't you turn your camera? She said, because by the time I get to 20 minutes, I'm done. I have to jump up and go do this, go do that. I'm like, what? Mm. And she has to struggle to stay there for an hour. But she has that personality. She's a Tony, you know, so I'm learning even through COVID. Um, now my dad is doing yoga because he never said he was. So I have a class. It's very slow. But his doctor said, you got to do something. Yeah. And I said, Dad, I, so I made a special class just for him. It's only 30 minutes. But now I have about six guys in it. Oh, wow. Some with some different issues, some in a wheelchair, some on the walker, some, you know. But they're learning and they're moving and they're, you know, he just said, it, you know, it, it's taken me a while to get used to doing it. And it's only twice a week, not for 30 minutes, but it's enough to get him to move in. And that's uh, most important to, um, especially in seniors, you have to move, mm -hmm. you know, and true for everybody, no matter what your age is, but especially for seniors. So what do you recommend? Do you recommend people who have, let's say, some um, uh, issues with their bodies, um, like back issues, joint issues? You think um, yoga will be good for them? Yes. I, I just finished teaching a class. It's called Healthy Back and Hips. Yeah. Because a lot of people have sciatic nerve. They have those type of issues. So I have a class for them. And we just work in that area. 
Well, we work on the whole body because everything is connected, but we do bring our concentration to that part of the body. I have some people, and even just let's go back to the, from a Christian standpoint, mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that says taking yoga from a Christian standpoint is even help them in a worship at church. Because, you know, a lot of times when you're even in church, your mind is all over the place. You're not on worship, you know. <laughs> But this is allowing them to be a little more present, even in a worship at church. You know, so when we talk about what the benefits are, they are strong both mentally, physically, and spiritually. And as the Christian, one of the things, so there's two areas where Christians tend to have a problem. One, I think so quite a few, but one is that because the poses are named after animals, you're worshiping the animal. And that's not true. Right. Because I named after the animals because that's how that animal innately stretched. Right. Exactly. It, it gives you a visual. So we can just dispel that myth for a minute. When we talk about meditation, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that tell you to meditate on the word both day and night. Okay. So when we have something specific that we're meditating on and all of our meditations are scriptural based, then you, you're in line with the Bible. Okay. So then we talk about the chanting. Okay, so we don't chant at my studio, but I don't have anything wrong with chanting. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I grew up in church way back when we were holy rollies and we were carrying <laughs> for the Holy Ghost. And you tell me if that wouldn't chant. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't go there, okay? But right. I do chanting, okay? But you can't, and there's nothing wrong with chanting if you know what you're chanting. It's just about memorizing a scripture or memorizing something. And it's, a, and it's, and it's what you're chanting. It's what you're chanting. Mm -hmm. So I don't do it just because people don't feel comfortable with it. So fine. That's not an issue with that. You know, so we get into some of the teachings and we say it's Buddhist. It's a religion. Yoga is not a religion. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual practice that any religion can practice. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, did the Buddhists and did that area, did they attach some of their teachers and do they use it? Yes, they do. But when you look at their yamas and near yamas and all of that, which I teach it when I'm training other yoga students, but we use the word of God as our truth. So we have the Beatitudes. We have the Ten Commandments. We have the fruit of the spirit. That's what we use as our truth. And that's what we teach. And what you know, everything, in my opinion, comes off the Bible anyway. Their teachings, whatever it is, it comes from scripture, it comes from the Bible, they just put their twist on it. Yeah. So who's to say? So we put that together and our teachers, all of my classes are named after the fruit of the spirit. So I have a joy class, a love class, a peace, a patience, temperance, meekness, gentleness. Mm. All my classes are named after the fruit of the spirit. So they help you walk out the fruit of the spirit because yoga is not an exercise. It's a lifestyle. It's a practice. Okay. And if we attach and working in with our Christian walk, our Christian walk, we know it's a day by day walk. We will never get there till we're gone and yeah. we meet Jesus. And that's all we're doing. So we're putting the two together, allowing you to reap the benefits of yoga, both mentally, physically, but also not allowing you, if you think you're compromising, your spiritual walk or your religion or what have you. But again, yoga is not a religion. It's a practice. Mm -hmm. Any religion can practice it. See, I like that. And for those who, you know, they're they're a little iffy about the whole yoga thing, you know, doing a Christian yoga class, that 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 would be that would be good to do. Um because like you said, it, you know, with the whole meditating and, and the chanting and everything, it all depends on what you're saying. Um, like I went to, like I was saying, my, my yoga class that I went to, you know, before COVID, um, they changed the teacher. You know, I was going to LA Fitness and um, they changed. I, I love the teacher they had before. So it was like a new teacher. And, you know, I, you know, she was just... <laughs> She was doing some stuff. I was just in, in in my head, like, okay, I'm not coming back to her again, you know, because she was just, you know, taking it some, to another level that I wasn't comfortable with, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, they're saying some things I, I, you know, didn't agree with, but, you know, that's as Christians, it's with anything you, when you're eating the hay, you spit out the straws. And I saw that, okay, no, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So, a, a Christian yoga class, 
you know, would be a, a, a good thing because you're not, like you said, it's not just from your classes, it's not just exercise you're getting, but you're getting, you are getting your spirit fed, <laughs> you know, and you're, you're being like ministered to and, and, and you're giving out. And I like that. And you know, the thing is too, some people say, well, I don't want to go to the class and be preached to. It's not being preached to at all. It's no different than going to a regular class. Sometimes I may not say anything. I may let the mu music minister to you. So if I'm doing a, a class on breath, all my classes I breathe. This is the air I breathe. You know, Lord, breathe into me. You know, sometimes I may not say anything. I may just let the music minister to you. And then other times I may have a subject or a topic, but it's no more than just trying to weave that into your everyday walking. But more than anything, Sacred Space Yoga Center is a place where you can be calm and you can get healing. If you, I, I've had a lady at one time came and she's like, and she just happened to be by herself. She said, Trina, I just want to lay here. The mm -hmm. I put the music on. I put, you know, so my classes are, are you know, at a point to where depending on who come in the class, I can change it. I can make it, you know, upbeat, a lower beat or what have you. Most of my uh, people are a little older. And my people don't want to stand on their hands. They don't want to do all that craziness. They want peace. They want healing. They want to see their body transform. They want their mind transformed. You don't know what they got to go back home to. They want to be able to go back home, but they have the right mindset. You know, yes, we do get that from church. We're not in church all day, we whatever. So we can get it in our exercise as well. So, you know, the thing is, is that, no, you're not being preached at. But, you know, I want to uplift you. I want you to have, I want this to be a sacred space. And that's what yoga is about. We want a transformation. You make a transformation. I'm just a conduit. I'm just being in that for you. I'm just opening the door, laying out the foundation. You do the work. I'm just, right. I'm just giving you a safe space. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I like that. And I like the name of your studio, Sacred Space. I like that. Mm -hmm. So what made you, how did you become a master yoga instructor? What, what, um, what does that entail? Lots of money. Lots of <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I'm always looking to learn something to add to my training. And this is what, even with a doctor that, you know, you have to keep your skills up. Yes. They're coming out new every day. People are asking me, so I go take this class to see how I can help you. So it's basically more or less a lot of training. I have over, um, you know, we register with Yoga Alliance. I am considered experienced RIT because I have so many hours of teaching. I've been teaching for 20 years, okay? I've taken so many trainings, and I'm retaking some of them over again. So when I first took my first 200-hour training, I took it from a secular point of view because I need to understand why right. people thought I couldn't be a yoga instructor. And the interesting thing part, when they ask you, why are you here, why are you here? And I said, well, I want to find out why I can't do yoga as a Christian. And the teachers looked at me like, it's not a religion, what's the problem? And that's what I need to hear. And that okay. was from a traditional yoga studio. Now, while I was there, I learned some things that, okay, I can see this and I can see that. So I took my 200 hour there, then I took it with a Christian organization, then I took it with another Christian organization. I wanted to get some different understanding. And then I took senior yoga, then I took chair yoga, then I took yoga working with kids, and I'm working on yoga and trauma right now. So mm. it, it's about just being able to serve my community. I know I can't serve everybody and I'm not trying to serve everybody, but people that in that age range of 35, 40 to 80, people that want to use yoga as a healing, people of color. Because when I first opened, which was in 2015, there was no people of color yoga studios. Now there's a few opening up. Yeah. So I wanted to be I wanted to be in the community. I wanted to make yoga at an affordable rate, which has been hard because for me to keep it affordable, that means I have to do some things so I can make it pay my bills and what have you. Right. Yoga, traditionally, you know, you're paying a lot of money to go to yoga, you know. So it's traditionally it's been for suburban white women. Yeah. I wanted to make it affordable. I wanted to be in the city. And I just wanted to. So as you know, learning how to do that. So as far as being a master yoga instructor, that's what the amount of hours that I've trained and the amount of classes that I've been teaching. But yoga, you're always a beginner. You gotta always be a beginner, even as a teacher. If I'm not always trying to be a beginner, then I'm, I'm, I'm defeating the purpose. 
because I need to be able to meet everybody where they are. Yeah, I like that. And I know you also educate people on the um, the healing properties and the potency of essential oils. I am a firm believer in that, you know, these herbs and, and spices that, you know, God had put on the earth, they have some um, healing properties to them. Mm -hmm. So just um, let's go into that. Um, I know you, you offer that. Yeah, so I do um, essential oils. So, um, you know, there's a lot of controversy over oils, why they cost so much and why they cost so cheap or what have you. I, I believe I'm with a brand that's uh, really use oils at the highest level and they are a little more expensive. So you can use them. I'm not, lavender oil, for instance, is such a go-to oil. It's a good oil just if you need to calm down. Yeah. Lavender oil is good for pain. You can take it topically if you use the right grade. You can use um, lavender oil for cuts. It would, uh, if you have bleeding, it will stop bleeding and instantly. I mean, your, lavender has so many things. I even put a drop of lavender on my coffee, and it's just so great. You know, I've had, I've had lavender um, lemonade. I've, yeah. I've, I've gone to the lavender, um, lavender the festival. festival. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so when you look at these healing properties of oils, you know, clove, or when you look at um, clove, is really good. It has lots of healing. It has, um, it's almost like an antibiotic, you mm -hmm. know, almost. Clove is without taking on the extra stuff. And so there's so many oils, like oregano is another one that has the, um, it's like an antibi uh, antibiotic, but it's on a natural basis. And, you know, and I wouldn't tell anybody to do this here. It's a class. But I had shingles years ago, and I couldn't do anything to relieve that. So finally, I started using the essential oils on it, which was uh, oregano and rosemary. It took all the bumps, the stuff away, began to take the pain. And I can tell every day more and more that illness was coming out by using the oils. So I use essential oils in so many ways. I cook with it mm. you know, because, if, you know, clothes. Um, all the cinnamon, all those different things. Yeah. But of course, you have to have a high brand. So I, I don't tell anybody to do that, but you need to make sure you know where your oils are coming from and they, they're full grade or that you know, medicinal grade. And they're going to cost you a lot more. So it's not going to be the ones you get from Target or Walmart. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but anything else, the thing is, is that with essential oils, it's definitely a mood lifter. Okay. I always have essential oils in my house, uh, lemongrass. And yeah, the old yang lane with lemongrass or lavender, it is a mood booster. It and is everything that we're going through with COVID being stuck in the house. We need something to lift us up. And then, you know, in and, and when you talk about, you know, everybody asks me, Can I use this? Can I use this brand? Look at it this way when you are taking um, um, diffusing essential oils, it's going in your nose, which means it's going in your body, almost like you're eating it or drinking it. So you want something that's high grade. So you want to be careful with what you're using for your essential oils. And a good example of that is um, bad, bath, um, bad Bath and Body Works. You know, if you're pregnant, you cannot work there yeah. because of all that synthetic oil. Yeah. And one lady had like two, three, four different uh, miscarriages. So you have to be careful. So yes, I do teach it. I use it from a high grade, from what I believe is high grade, the company I've been with for 10 years. I'm sure there's a couple of them out there, but I don't know about all of those, so I don't <laughs> talk about those. But, you know, essential oils have so many healing properties within itself. And then you it mix, does. mix that with yoga and mix that with some good worship music, and you can just, you and the Lord can have a good time. <laughs> right. Be in heaven and while your body is, is healing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. Again, I I have essential oils in my home as well that I've been, you know, working with for years, like in my um hair care products and um just whatever uh, skin skin care products. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I remember I made some one of the uh, supervisors at my job like some years ago. She was complaining like of um back pain, and I whipped something up. You know. And uh, she said it was it, it, it was feeling better. I was like, oh, okay. You know, I, I researched like you know what 
what what essential oil is good for for that because again it, it's it's their healing properties god puts stuff on this earth that yeah. it, it not just to look pretty you know it's, it it has some healing properties to it mm-hmm. yeah and i know that you also um have massages people get massages at your studio and reflexology can you explain reflexology to us okay so massages is done by um genesis that's Teresa o'brien because we're in the same building so she does the massages i am a massage therapist but i chose not to do massage mm-hmm. much work <laughs> <laughs> she's an excellent Teresa o'brien is excellent reflexology is massages is done to the feet okay we have five thousand nerves in our feet Wow. If you yeah, that's why when your feet hurt, everything hurt. Mm. <laughs> so every part of your body is a, a part of your feet is associated to a part of the body. So you can go in there and do massages, manipulate different areas of the feet, and it can b- bring healing or wholeness or bring um some a relief to that area. And um some people that don't want massages, they'll come and get you know reflexology because you know you can with their feet and you could you know and the thing is going back to my daughter um she was i was she was laying down and she was kind of um was, she was not feeling well i said give me your feet let me do a massage no every time you do my um, let me do a reflexology no every time you do it i gotta go to the bathroom I'm like uh-huh you full of it you know <laughs> but getting that colon area and every time i do a feet because she does have bowel issues too so every time I get into that colon stomach area and work that part of the feet, it will send her right to the bathroom. You know, so you can work various parts of the body and just bring some relief. You know, whether or not it does a total healing, I'm not going to say that, but it does bring some relief. And it's, um, it, if nothing else, it's a good foot massage. <laughs> <laughs> so you just do feet? Do you do hand, hands too? Um, I know um practice hands but i have had a couple people that ask me that have some issues so i will work their hands but it's not something i normally do but i've had clients to ask me okay you can do the ears too oh you know? so the ears the hands and the feet i normally just work with the feet but i have worked with the hands the ears to me is just too small of a space <laughs> <laughs> It is small. Yeah. So um, I read in the bio that you're an adjunct um, professor at Wayne State yes. University. Now, what, what you teach is usually is along these lines. No, so I teach. Oh, come now. Okay. Okay, I teach yoga there. Okay. Oh, okay. So, um, when I'm teaching at Wayne State, I also te- teach at um the Y. I teach at the Hannah House. So I basically teach yoga. It's not classified as Christian yoga. But of course, I'm always gonna come out. <laughs> okay. Right. right. <laughs> so they get they get Christian, but I do, I mean, when you look at it, there's no difference between what the yoga is. It's the philosophy and it's what you're teaching and what yeah. And so when I'm in a um a Wayne State and I'm teaching a class and I'm teaching them sun salutation, you know, and I'll tell them, you know, sun salutation, it is saluting the sun. I said, so when you're doing the sun salutation. If you're a Christian, you can be like me. You can salute the S-O-N. And if you're not, you can salute the S-O-N. It's your choice. S-U-N, S-O-N. Yeah. It's your choice. So I do um, teach at Wayne State, um, teach yoga there. Sometimes I teach a um, mindfulness class at Wayne State as well. So, um, of course, right now, I don't know if I'll be teaching there in a while. But Yeah. (laughs) So I have taught there for two years. Oh, that's good. (laughs) So I have, I'm just curious, like, I know you're a minister. Um, have you, like, in, at, when you first started, have you had any oppositions from the church? Not from my church. I went to my pastor in the very beginning. Before I even joined the church, I needed to know where they were. And you know, like, I don't really know. I don't, you know, <laughs> And then um, he, I think he did some studies and he came back and he's like, okay, with it. He's like, it's not a religion. We talked about it. My pastor's wife, she is probably my most loyal student. See, I like that. Wait a minute. Stop for one second. I like that. He went and did his own research, right? People do your own research. That's 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 <laughs> that's what you have to do. You do your own research. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, he did his own research and he came back and had some questions because you know, depending on where you go to get your research, you're gonna get all opposition. Yeah, everything. 
But the fact that he found out that everything that he read said it wasn't a religion, so that was he was okay with that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get any opposition from there. Now I did was teaching at a church. They asked me to teach, but they wanted me to change the name. They wanted me to change it to Stretch. Okay. I said, but I'm doing yoga. They're like, well, no, but just change the name. So I went back to my pastor and I said, I kind of feel like I'm a hypocrite. I'm, I'm, he said, you're not changing the name. They're changing the name. He said, did you tell them what you're teaching? I'm like, yes. Are you teaching the poses? Yes. He said, that's on them. <laughs> they changed the name. That's on them. So, you know, I talked there for a couple of years, but that's what they wanted to call it was Christian stretch or what have you. Okay. But. I mean, you're doing hey, whatever, whatever works. So, you know, but yeah, so I've had a couple of churches do that. I had a couple of churches where I've tried to get into their church, um, specifically my mom's church and a couple others. I'm not calling any churches out, but they said no. Yeah. And that's okay. And the thing is, is that I explain to people what Christian yoga is or yoga from a Christian perspective. I don't try to change your mind. You can have your perspective. You, you know, I'm just going to give you the information and you can do what you want with it. Yeah. So I don't try to convince anybody. I don't try to change their mind. But I do ask that, you know, before you belittle it and you go put something bad on my page, please research it. Yes. And then you can put it on your page. Don't come to my page with that. Right. <laughs> if you don't agree, then just keep it moving. You right. know. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Right. You know, um, and again, it, it you know, it all depends on like if you want to try yoga. It depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, again, I went to another class. This was like a little bit before COVID too. I, I knew that, that one wasn't for me. You know, she was talking. <laughs> I don't get into like the chakras and all that. I don't, I don't. I don't get into all of that. You know, she was into you know doing all of the ad and. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, this is not for me. So you have to know and and you just just go if you're interested in yoga. You know which one is 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 for you. And um, before we uh, wrap up here, I want to give out your contact info because you are local here. Um, well, our local, which is um Detroit or Metro Detroit. Um, your actual studio. Is Sacred Space Yoga Center is on 4801 Chrysler in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And your telephone number is 313-352-6788. So if anybody, you know, want to get in touch with uh, Trina, you know, regarding, you know, uh, if you want more information or you want her to come, you know, teach somewhere, you know, yoga, just, you know, reach out to her. And you have Zoom classes for those who are not, um, you know, local, and they can catch you on online, correct? Yes. And let me just ask something. Right now, the yoga studios, the gyms, none of that's open. So we're not open right yep. now. I do have a full, like, 15, 18 classes a week on Zoom. Now, if you go to my website, it's sacredspaceyogadetroit.com. And if you go into the schedule of class, there's a, um, um, under... Um, pay now, what have you? There's a class, um, five week a week, your first week free. So you can come in and it says first week free. You can sign up for that, take as many classes you want to that first week, experience everything, and just see if it's something you're interested in. If you're not, then that's fine. But if you, yeah. think you might like it, then enjoy that first week on us. But yes, and right now I do do a couple of classes depending on the weather outside. Oh, okay. Um, no, that'd be on Facebook on my uh, web page if I'm doing one outside. Most of the time I'm at Lafayette Park. Right okay. Now, um, and I'll do it over there. But the weather's been so crazy, the too hot or rainy or what have you. But all of my classes are on Zoom now, and you can take them and you can take that first week free. And you have my name, Trina Williams, on that, on the Master Yoga Store. <laughs> so that's okay. It's Trina Campbell. Just so oh, my, you know, but my apologies, Lord. And it's right on the paper. I, I'm not going to say who. Um, okay. Yeah, it is. It is Campbell, y'all. I'm sorry. It, it is, is Campbell. Campbell. But you might even see it some places. Trina Swihart. I did get married a couple of years ago, but I haven't changed my name yet. And, you know, it's just so much to change your name, especially when you're in business. But it is Trina Campbell. And Where I get William from? I don't know what I got. <laughs> and I said Campbell and the thing. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. It is Trina Campbell. 
Campbell. <laughs> and um, so what would you say to someone who is still, maybe still be on the fence from a Christian perspective or maybe not a Christian perspective, what would you say to them to, you know, have I another um, point of view? Um, experience our difference. You got a week free, come try us out. Even if you, because I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian studio, but I'm not even per se a Christian studio. I'm a studio that offer um, a safe space for Christians to practice. So if you're not a Christian, I do have a couple that come to my class. They are Muslim and I have somebody come to my class that's atheist, okay? And, you know, but even if you're not a Christian, you know, if you're someone between the ages, basically 35, 40, even, I have some younger ones, but between that and 80 that want to use yoga as a healing, then come check us out. You know, we're not going to do headstands. We're not going to do all of that. <laughs> I, I don't believe in that for yoga for healing, okay? But if you just want to try us out, you have a week. You can come in, ease in any class that you want to. Once you sign up, I'll send you the Zoom for that week. You can pick and choose any class. If we have a cooking demo that week, you can come to our cooking demo. So I would just say, be curious and try it. And if it's not for you, it's okay. Yeah, uh, real quickly, because uh, I'm curious about that, your cooking demos, what, what type of foods do you cook? <laughs> well, okay, so what happened with that is my husband, I have not cooked since I got married, so and I haven't cooked in three years, okay? <laughs> excellent cook, excellent baker, excellent everything. When we first went into COVID, because of my senior population, I know a lot of them live alone. So we started doing a lot of activities, adult coloring, while well, I'll send everybody the same picture, we're coloring. We have um, all different types of things just to bring them so they're not home by themselves. So somebody asked me about something my husband made. So I'm like, okay, let's just try this. So we started just cooking. We made everything from homemade pot pies to some of everything. And just this last week, we did a chocolate, a cabbage chocolate cake. It was made out of cabbage. It was oh, really? so good, you know. So we just, you know, we're you know for the month of July and August we cooked the rainbow. Every week we cooked with a different color, all purple, okay. all red, all greens. So we're working on what we're gonna do for the fall. We were doing it every week, and my husband like, can we do this every other week? I want one of my Saturdays back. I'm like, we can, but what are you doing? It's COVID. You ain't doing nothing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so we're coming back to every other week. So the cooking classes, it just depends. If somebody asks me, somebody said, Trina, I want to know how to make a quiche. My husband made good quiche. We may do that. We made a lot of soups. We made some fattening stuff. We made a lot of cheesecakes. So we made a little bit of everything. A lot of it is what people's asking. I don't know how to make dough. Can you teach, teach us how to make pie dough? Um, we talked about doing some canning, so we may be doing some canning um, in the future. So our cooking classes consist of anything and everything, depending on what people ask. Somebody asked about a gumbo, so we may do that next Saturday. But, um, and you know, we try to make it to where if you're vegetarian, you have choices. And if you're a meat lover like I am, you have choices. <laughs> but, you know, we do both, and we... Um, we usually do a meal or some type of entree and we'll do a dessert just so you have a couple of things to work with. Oh, okay. That sounds great. And you can find that on the website as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to thank you, Trina, for just coming on today and sharing with our audience um, the benefits of yoga, um, what it is and what it is not. And um, again, everyone, um, if you want to experience um, sacred space yoga. You can do that. Go to sacredspaceyoga.com. Um, Trina offers um, sacredspaceyogadetroit.com. Let me put that back on the screen for those who might be watching, but for those who are listening, um, again, that's sacredspaceyogadetroit.com. Um, you can go there and sign up for classes. Remember, they're giving you the first week for free. So check it out. It's not it's not going to hurt. So just check it out and and, and experience because it's a great experience. Because um, like I said, I've, I've done it myself and I just I do yoga, period. But from coming from this angle, it's much more um, rewarding to me. So just go ahead and. Um, 
get in contact with her um, through Zoom and have have fun, you know, and don't don't take somebody's word for stuff. Do your own research. Right. You know, do your own research. Um, cause it is a lot of stuff out here, a lot of misconceptions. And just do your own research. That's all I can say. I can't stress that enough. And in, in everything in life, <laughs> do your own research. Right. You know, so thank you so much for having me, for calling me, for having Kim get in contact. With yes. Me. I appreciate that so much. And just thank you. <laughs> thank and I will be sending you a link so you can have your the month free, a month of September. <laughs> oh, thank you. Cause I was gonna say, you know, cause I miss I miss my yoga. So I was I was gonna go and, and sign up anyway. So <laughs> Oh, um, I'll gift that to oh, thank you so much. So sweet. And uh, thank you again for just sharing your information, sharing your knowledge with us and your time. I, I appreciate it. Okay. I know that people's time is very precious. And I know you just did a few classes before we even <laughs> did this um, interview here. So I appreciate you and um, much success to you and your um, studio and all your endeavors. Um, thank you everyone for listening and or watching. Uh, we'll be back again next week and with another great topic. So thank you so much for, you know, supporting us. And I want to thank people from, uh, France. Um, we have a lot of listeners and, and a lot of audience from France. And I just want to say, um, merci. Uh, I really appreciate that. And um, everybody else, I love you and I appreciate you too. And just don't forget to um, subscribe to us, um, to any major streaming platform, whether it's iHeartRadio, Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts. We're just about everywhere. And if you want to watch, we have YouTube, Kicking It With Kay and Clay. And on Facebook, you can watch it as well, Kicking It With Kay and Clay. And thank you so much. And we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Isn't it with Kay and Clay? Isn't it with Kay and Clay? Isn't it with Kay and Clay?